how do you display your collection? Now, displaying my kind of my DVD, my Blu-ray collection, my books, etc., etc., it's not something that until recently was that big of a concern, not because I don't have a big collection, but because the house I was living in for the last 10 years was so small that just trying to get them in was more of a concern than trying to make them look nice. I, I moved last month. I moved, it's only a few streets away, but uh, it's a smaller garden nearer to shops, but it's a bigger house. And it's considerably more roomy and more rooms plural so it's something it's been more of a concern how can I you know display things in the best way to make them look the best because I love my I mean I love my stuff now do you you know so how do other people do it you know I mean I have a really large collection I have a large collection of movies dvds and blu-rays and i have an even larger collection of television there's some blu-rays in there though most of, though most of that is probably dvds it's like how exact how exactly do you do it how do other people do it do they separate movies and television do you combine them and and what order do you keep them in do you keep them in alphabetical order by genre by year now, what I used to do at my old house, I, I, I've i separated movies and, and television for a long time. I think at one time I didn't, but then the, the my collection of movies got sizable enough in the, the 2000s, really, when DVDs really kicked off, that it made sense to start, to start separating them. Now, how I used to kind of do it, I used to, both with movies and television, order them chronologically basically in terms of year now with tv that's a little bit more difficult but i would usually choose the year that that show started and then put them all in there now sometimes that didn't make sense because of course you've got things like doctor who and the bill that literally lasted for decades so do you put them all in order starting in the 60s or the 80s even though they're seasons from the 2000s <laughs> it's complicated now you know this this was this was never really an issue in the eighties. In the late eighties, when I started collecting VHS, pretty much it was do just Doctor Who at first. So that was <laughs> that was a fairly easy thing to to display. In the early nineties, I started predominantly taping off air, but I started getting other things like a little bit of Donkey and One Foot in the Grave. And then as the nineties rolled on, stuff like the X Files and and things like that. Now, I mean, it, it's at a point where it's just, how do I make them look the best? Now, one thing I've done since moving is I've just did it the other last few days. I've actually separated out Doctor Who from everything else. I've given Doctor Who its own specific bookcase rather than having previously just kind of mixed it in with other cult TV and you know from the appropriate decades and what i've done i've got like the blu-rays on the top shelf so it's, i've done it kind of like in format order of format i've got the blu-rays on the top the animations most of which i've got the blu-rays of and of course the, the, the classic sets uh in terms of new who i have series one on blu-ray predominantly for the empty child i've got all the Matt Smith here on Blu-ray, apart from a couple of the specials. Um, what was it? The, the the Doctor, the Widow, and the Wardrobe, and and Day, and Time of the Doctor. I've just got the DVDs of those, but the rest of the Matt Smith here I have the Blu-rays of, and I have Series Ten on Blu-ray, and several of the Capaldi specials because I didn't, I didn't see most of them at the time. I only caught up with them last year, and I managed to get the Blu-rays fairly cheap off eBay. Last Christmas was really good. Mysterio was okay. Um, the less said about Husbands of River Song, the better. That's kind of it for the Blu-rays, and then of course, I've, you know, there's, and then of course, and then I put the DVDs, and I, you know, I've got most of the original DVDs. 
apart from maybe one or two of the revisitations. And then at the very, very bottom shelf, I've got a few of the VHSs that I've still got left because I, I gave away a lot of the VHSs when I moved to Queensland in 2012. But I've still got some. Actually, the, I've got more than I thought I had because there was actually, this is how small my previous house was. There were actually boxes I'd never unpacked in 10 years because there wasn't room. They were like shoved at the back of the wardrobe and there wasn't room. Some of them, I, I didn't even remember what was in them. And some of them was, there are some Doctor Who VHSs here. And I've got a few of the oldest VHSs actually on top of the bookcase, not on a shelf, actually on top of it, displayed facing outwards. I've got like Spearhead and Seeds and Zygons and Sharda and uh, something else, I can't remember which. Because it looks nice, frankly, for no other reason than it looks pretty. And I have to admit, it looks fantastic. I think it probably looks... It looks the best that it has, really, in terms of Doctor Who. It looks absolutely fabulous. Better than I've had it before. So I'm, tr I'm still trying to figure out how to make the rest of my collection look better. The other day, I kind of... I, I started messing around with, with my movies, and I, I tried to give, like, a, a bookcase to exclusively just to horror movies, because I know a lot of horror fans just do that. I mean, you can see them on YouTube doing some of them have entire horror rooms. I don't think I'm enti I don't think I'm entirely that obsessive, actually. I I mean, I love horror movies, but I don't think I'm quite that far gone. Uh, and I don't really like how it looks. It, it doesn't. Mm, I think I'm going to abandon that idea and go back to kind of decades, especially with like '80s movies. I love seeing the '80s movies together, so I think I'm going to go back to doing that. It didn't really work. But the other question is, what you know, what can you do with the, with the rest of your of your TV collection? I initially kind of thought, uh, 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 you know, I'll, I might try and separate out the genre stuff this time. And, I, and at first, I, I included Doctor Who in that before removing it. I don't know. And because in the old house, I did I just did the chronological thing. I'm now I'm not. I, I I I tried to do one with like a bookcase of just my all-time favorites, but that feels a bit weird because favorites can change. And if you know, I mean, I'm not going to have it on DVD or whatever if I don't like it anyway. So <laughs> it, it seems a bit dubious. I'm thinking now about maybe doing it chronologically, but in reverse, kind of like starting off with the absolute newest ones. Most, I guess the most recent TV would be that Red Dwarf special from 2020. That's the, the most recent one. Though I have ordered the Blu-ray of All of Us Are Dead, which will probably be the newest one, because there hasn't been much this decade so far. Same with movies. There hasn't really been that much that I've bought. I've bought maybe three or four movies and very little television from this decade as yet. All of Us Are Dead is really the first new thing that I've bought. I mean, that Red Dwarf is Red Dwarf. It's old, isn't it? It's an old property. But All of Us Are Dead is, is, is the first brand new thing that I've actually been that interested in and enamoured with enough to actually want to buy it on Blu-ray. So that's nice. It's nice there's something from this decade. And of course, there's posters. Uh, I, I mean, I know lots of people have posters, I presume. I have finally graduated from the blue tech, uh, what do you call them, D drawing pins routine. I never really liked it, especially blue tech, because it's a, a it damages the posters, and it just looks bad. And especially, I think especially in Australia with the extreme heat, and then the fact that you have to have like fans on full blast as well. The Blu-rays actually, I mean not the Blu-rays, the blue tack actually melts. So you can see po large posters slowly but surely starting to sink down on the wall. Oh God, <laughs> it's not good. I finally graduated from that and I'm, I'm framing them. I've actually started framing them. I'm not complete by any means. I've been in six weeks, but I am not complete by any means. I've 
because it's expensive. I mean, it's time consuming and it's expensive to buy, especially large posters which need large frames. It's expensive. And I've been kind of, I've kind of changed the look as well because I've changed a lot of the posters. I've kind of removed some of the posters that were, they were up in the old house and even the one before that for a really long time. So it's kind of a time for a change of image. So I've got a lot of 70s movie posters and 80s movie posters. I've done some prints of my own of some Doctor Who ones like uh, the Shardar cover and things like that. Now I'll tell you what I have just done and it looks absolutely fantastic. You know I, I'm a fan of uh, Bridget Novell and you know I, I, I love uh, Wicked Science. Well, that's not a show that's ever really had any kind of posters to it as far as I'm aware. I've never seen any any evidence that it's ever even had a smallish poster or anything like that. Now, a few months ago, I, I used the season one promotional image, which you can get a decent copy of off, off the net, decent kind of resolution. And I did myself a kind of A4 print and I actually framed that and put it on the wall for a while. I've taken that down now because what I've found is there's an eBay seller that sells movie posters. They're the ones I've bought most of the new new movie posters from and they look fantastic. I've got stuff like Fletch and various other things, Close Encounters. I've got loads of, loads of posters that I haven't put up yet. The ones I have look great, but there's lots I haven't put up yet because I, 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 I can only afford two or three frames at a time. Um, so it's going to take a while. But this seller actually, they will actually print out giant sized posters of any image you want, providing the resolution is good enough to get a decent image. And when I saw that, I, I'd never seen that before uh, up until a few weeks ago. When I saw that, you know, the little light went off over my head and I thought, ooh. And I, I bought one and I gave them the, uh, the, the Wicked Science image. Didn't, I, I was a bit dubious it would work. I was a bit dubious what the resolution would be like on a big poster. It came and it's absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. I framed that already. I've got it on the wall in my sitting room. It looks bloody gorgeous. I never thought I'd get anything like that and it looks absolutely fucking beautiful. I'm really happy with that. I've actually sent off for a few other things. <laughs> I wish I had a video camera so I could show you. Oh well, maybe one day. But yeah, anyway, I know this is a fairly incoherent ramble. It's just Something I wanted to talk about because this is what I've been obsessing over since I moved in here. How to display things and how to make things look the best. How do other people do it? I mean, I know I know a lot of Doctor Who fans watch this channel. Do you do you set Doctor Who aside exclusively? How do you display? Do you do you have other things? Do you have other movies? Do you display your movies in decades or alphabetical or by genre? And what about other TV shows? How do you do that? Because even though I love the Doctor Who display, I think that looks absolutely fantastic and I'm totally sticking with that. I'm still kind of varying between extremes as to how to display everything else. Kind of stressing me out, actually. So let me know in the comments how you display your stuff if you've got stuff to display. Anyway, thanks for listening. Like, share, subscribe. Oh, I hate saying that. It's so cheap um i'll talk to you <laughs> i'll talk to you again soon bye bye